The compromise was actually a series of bills passed mainly to address issues related to slavery. The bills provided for slavery to be decided by popular sovereignty and the admission of new states, prohibited the slave trade in the District of Columbia, settled the Texas boundary dispute, and established a stricter Fugitive Slave Act. By 1850, sectional disagreements related to slavery were straining the bonds of the Union between the North and the South. These tensions became especially critical when Congress began to consider whether Western lands acquired after the Mexican-American War would permit slavery. In 1849, California requested permission to enter the Union as a free state, meaning one where slavery was banned. Adding more free state senators to Congress would destroy the balance between slave and free states that had existed since the Missouri Compromise of 1820. Because everyone looked to the Senate to defuse the growing crisis, Senator Henry Clay of Kentucky proposed a series of resolutions designed to adjust amicably all existing questions of controversy arising out of the institution of slavery. Clay attempted to frame his compromise so that nationally minded senators would vote for legislation in the interest of the Union. In one of the most famous congressional debates in American history, the Senate discussed Clay's solution for seven months. It initially voted down his legislative package, but Senator Stephen A. Douglas of Illinois stepped forward with substitute bills which passed both houses, and with the Compromise of 1850, Congress had addressed the immediate crisis created by the recent territorial expansion. But unfortunately, one aspect of the compromise, a strengthened Fugitive Slave Act, soon began to threaten sectional peace. Though a Fugitive Slave Clause was included in the Constitution and supported by legislation since the founding of the nation, the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 added several new regulations. For example, both federal and local law enforcement in all states, both slave and free, were required to enforce the legislation and arrest suspected fugitive slaves. In addition, anyone aiding an enslaved person's escape from bondage was subject to imprisonment and a fine. The enforcement of these strict requirements angered many people in the North who felt that it went against their beliefs and the fact that they was being forced to be directly involved. They were okay turning a blind eye, but when they was being forced to participate, that was a different story. The Compromise of 1850 is composed of five statutes enacted in September of 1850. The acts called for the admission of California as a free state, provided for a territorial government for Utah and New Mexico, established a boundary between Texas and the U.S., and called for the abolition of the slave trade in Washington, D.C., as well as amending the Fugitive Slave Act. This document here, which was also shown first, is Henry Clay's handwritten copy of the original resolutions, which were not passed. The transcription includes Clay's resolution and the five statutes approved by Congress. Unfortunately, the Compromise of 1850 failed to settle the tensions that continued to divide the nation during the next decade and did not establish a principle that could be applied unequivocally to territories outside the Mexican secession. Extremists in both sections were displeased with the compromise and the American Civil War would begin on April 12, 1861. And that's all for this short history lesson. And remember, if it's more interesting, you can find it here.